In today's video, we're going to talk about ageism and sexism and the beauty industry. Hey everyone, this is Lisa. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Lisa Monique, where we cover all things lifestyle and beauty from my perspective as a 57-year-old empty nester. So this video came about for several different reasons, but before I get started, for those that don't watch the whole thing and kind of jump around, um, I am encouraging your viewpoint, your comments um, in this video, but you have to play nice. So um, anyway, I'll just say that <laughs> if you don't know what that means and you don't play nice, well, then you're just not going to see your comment on the video. So just play nice. Different viewpoints are all encouraged and um, I'd be interested to see. Okay, but this video came about, got a few rabbit holes to go down before we get started. Uh, this video came about because I was contacted over the summer by a 61 year old entrepreneur named Marty. And Marty emailed me saying that she was coming out with a product on Amazon and she was new to this influencer thing, didn't know how uh, people go about getting it into hands of influencers so that we talk about it. Well, usually I get so many requests, especially from things on Amazon that I don't even read them. And I do apologize if you send me something um, and I don't have time to read them all. But I do kind of quickly glance down and look for any emails from my viewers. So I do try and answer the emails from my viewers. So I did read this one and it had links showed her and her family. And I thought, you know, I really love the fact that at 61, She's coming out with a product on Amazon. I thought that was kind of interesting. I've always thought about, you know, how do people come out with these products on Amazon? Maybe it's something I'm going to want to do. So I said, yes, um, when you get your product prototype, um, if you want to send it one to me, I will talk about it on my channel. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So her product on Amazon is this uh, farmhouse style dryer sheet container. And it says it makes sense and you can fit your ugly dryer sheet box and then still have it look attractive, especially if you have a really nice laundry room like everyone seems to be getting right now. Um, I just kind of have bifold doors. <laughs> I'm closing um, my washer and dryer here in the rental. But this is really pretty. However, since I don't use dryer sheets, you can flip this around. It is two-sided. And you can also have this little farmhouse collection, this and that. And this is what I actually use. It's uh, sitting in my kitchen and I have actually put in it all the seed packets that I've purchased for 2024 planting season. Now I probably have this many seeds for the 2023 planting season that I haven't planted yet, but it's just so fun to buy seeds. Um, so that's what I have. So Again, really cute, it's $24.99, but it's 25% off. Just you go to Amazon and that link will be down below and you click on the boxes, say, you know, 25%. And then until the end of this month, you can save an additional 10% uh, if you use the coupon LisaMon10. And I actually went on Amazon and it looks like it's just another redeem coupon. So you can just click on it and redeem it also uh, to save another 10%. So if you want to support a small entrepreneur and you have the need for this farmhouse style or know somebody, it'd be a really cute little Christmas gift, uh, whether or not they use it for their dryers or to hold other things, uh, the link again will be down below. So I appreciate Marty reaching out to me and um, starting her own business on Amazon because haven't you wondered how people, you know, get these products on Amazon? I really want to talk to her about how she did that. Uh, but she also asked me to speak uh, at a, to speak next month on her new program, Women Embracing Aging. So you can see where this is tying into the topic of this video. So Marty is certified in EFT tapping. And if you're like me and you've never heard of tapping before, it's um, it's a way to deal with stress and anxiety, and I could be totally wrong, so I do apologize because this is just me reading um, on the internet and Googling tapping, but I think it's similar to like acupuncture, 
or your mind. So you're releasing your emotional or psychological stress point. So I'm intrigued. Uh, there is a link uh, in the description box below if you want to find out more uh, She about tapping, or not actually about tapping, but you can go to her website and see what she says about um, the program, the Women Embracing Aging. Okay, I wanted to jump back in here and insert this in because I feel like I did not describe the woman embracing aging program accurately. So it is more of a, it is not just an EFT tapping community or program. It is a place where, you know, women can get together and talk about embracing aging um, as far as beauty, finances, health, and it's almost, it's a support group area. So it is a subscription area. Two free calls will give you a lot of information. Sometimes that might be all that you need to just get going and uh, diving deeper. Sometimes you will need more support and a community to discuss these issues. And so that's what the Women Embracing Aging program is about. They use the techniques of EFT tapping, but it is not a tapping program per se. It is not just for that, but it is a community uh, where women will support other women going through a lot of issues that come up as we get older. So wanted to make that clarification. And again, there's a link down in the description box below if you're interested in finding out more and click on the link up for the two free calls. Uh, one of them is tomorrow. Uh, so if you want to find out more information about what this community is about um, and if it's something that interests you, uh, then go ahead and click on the link in the description. But when we were talking or emailing about women and aging, it just got me thinking about my viral video, Makeup Mistakes Women Over 50 Make. It has over 4 million views. It's a two-year-old video. The quality is terrible. It's like, it's like not my pride and joy video, but it's the one that's out there all the time. And um, I get a lot of comments on that video saying that women should embrace aging, embrace their age, um, that it's ageism, you know, pushing beauty products, it's sexism uh, because it's a male dominated industry. Um, we must have low self-esteem to want to wear makeup and or do whatever uh, beauty things that you want, whether it be makeup or coloring your hair or um, Botox, fillers, facials, chemical peels, plastic surgery, you know, all that stuff. Um, they just say live and let live and um, just let yourself age. And they kept calling it aging gracefully. Um, but I have my uh, feelings on that too. So I decided to dive deep and let's look at these three closely. And this is where I'm encouraging those of you that want to comment on your own experiences um, to do so below because I know my feelings are based on my experiences. So I've never had a man tell me to wear more makeup. You might have. There's no one size fits all. Everybody's story is different. But for the majority of women that I know personally or talk to or anything that like to wear makeup or color their hair or get Botox or put fillers in, none of this applies. And I'll start putting on my makeup. It's supposed to be a good ready with me. Okay, so when I see a comment that women should embrace their aging uh, because social media is making women obsessed about getting older, I somewhat agree, but mostly disagree. So why do I somewhat agree? Because I never knew, I was in my 40s, and I never knew that having a line here when you smile was considered aging along your nasal labia folds. Yeah, I never knew that that was something that people obsessed over until I saw um, Oprah. <laughs> I saw Dr. Oz and Oprah, and they were talking about putting fillers here. And then I was like, oh, I have those lines. I mean, I think you can embrace aging. I love being 57. I love everything that comes along with it, you know, mentally, 
Um, I don't really care what people think. Um, I say I take that back. I mean, obviously, I, I want to be a good citizen and, you know, things like that. Um, but uh, I'm not doing anything to please anybody uh, at this point of my life. And so I don't need social media to tell me that there are changes in my skin um, or, you know, in my hair. I mean, I don't, still don't have that much gray. It's just kind of speckled across the top. That's genetics. My Aunt B, 91 years old, she still has brown hair on the back of her head. She has gray up in the front, but her, her, her back of her head is still brown. So I don't need someone to tell me that I'm getting age spots and my melasma is, you know, has, well, uh, rather that I have melasma um, because I am noticing the changes because I look at myself every day in the mirror or my lashes have become thinner. Again, I don't need a mascara commercial to tell me that these changes are happening and I don't feel like I have to embrace them um, and just let them be when there are simple things that we can do to minimize the look. And I don't feel like that wanting to look better or change your skincare to get your skincare to look healthier, more glowy like it used to when you were younger means um, that you don't like being your age. I don't know. Um, Again, if there are a few things that you can do, like putting concealer over your nose to reduce things that you don't like about yourself or that you notice that you want to change, as long as you're doing it for yourself, why not? Now, a lot of times I think people will do it for other people and sometimes people, women, if they're um, single and they're going out somewhere, they might be putting on makeup because they want to meet somebody. Usually for me, I'm putting on makeup to meet other women, book club or meet for lunch or something like that. Um, it's not, I'm not doing it um, for a man, which brings me to point number two, that sexism in the beauty industry. I'm sure there are men that tell women, you know, fix yourself up, you look terrible, or, you know, something like that. I'm sure there were a lot of mothers that told their daughters, you know, to do that also. So uh, there are probably a lot of things in your past that affect the way you are about things now. But in general, I don't feel like it's men in the industry that are, or sexism, in the industry that's um, making women want to wear makeup or color their hair or change themselves up a little bit. Now, I will say if they are selling a product like plastic surgery or Botox or something like that, uh, they might tell you or point out a few things that um, you know, you're like, well, why are you telling me this? But they're selling a product. And it can be a man. It can be a woman. I have a woman der dermatologist. Um, if they're trying to point out like, hey, we can give you some Botox for your 11s. Look how deep my 11s are, you know, but I have bangs. But if they're like, you could, you know, do Botox or we can take care of, you know, your, your lip lines or whatever, you know, you might be kind of a little getting a little self-conscious of. You know, it, it could be a man pointing it out to you. could just as easily be a woman. They're selling a product, and their product is um, something in the makeup or something in the beauty industry. And so maybe you're just against that, but it's just consumerism. And, you know, 20 years ago, we didn't have all these options, and I don't think there's anything wrong with having them. I mean, some people do get addicted to them, I think. 
to blame men or sexism for it, I, I think is a load of baloney because I certainly don't put makeup on to attract a man. I don't go out uh, anywhere looking for a man when I notice that I've put on five pounds and I'm trying to lose my five pounds. It is because my clothes are getting too tight. Not that my husband has ever, ever commented on my weight. Okay, I went to church, came back, went to finish editing this video and realized the second half or last third got cut off because um, uh, I ran out of time and the camera stopped recording. So you're not going to really get to get ready with me because I've already got ready. But um, back to um, the sexism. Uh, the other th reason why I don't think it's necessarily sexism that um, drives the beauty industry is because by saying that it's sexism, then it, it takes away women are empowered. And, you know, it's our choice to be putting on makeup and everything. And it, it, again, it's, it's saying that we're just doing it for men. And so many of the new uh, product lines and uh, makeup brands and things like that, they are women owned businesses, women created businesses. They're coming out with the skincare, they're coming out with the uh, makeup. And so again, I just really can't say that I think it's all because of sexism. Maybe, you know, in the entertainment industry where, you know, majority of it's still um, run by men. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure there and uh, to look a certain way. So that could be where that's coming from. But that is such a small percentage of society. And uh, again, doing things like my skincare to try and get my skin to look its best and putting on makeup when I want to go out. Um, yeah, don't, I don't want to be lumped into, I'm just doing it for, because men have told me to do it. Um, that kind of just it doesn't, it's not cheapen is the word that keeps popping in my head, but basically you're taking away the fact that as a woman, I can make my own choices and I am choosing to do this for me, not for a man. So anyways, and then finally, um, the third point that I see or I would get comments on, and, and not even just this video, there are other videos too that I would get this comment on, that um, need to have more self-esteem, or it's because of a lack of confidence that um, women need to make uh, wear makeup or you know have some other beauty procedure done. And um, I will say, I do feel more confident when I am dressed up and that is either makeup or the clothing and it's not just dressing up but it's just um, maybe dressing up to the average person out like when I go to my uh, place in Maine it's very rural and I never wear makeup I don't wear makeup the entire week I'm there I don't curl my hair or anything like that. Um, because when I'm out and about, um, one, I'm, half the time I don't see anyone or I might be going see the fishermen out on the dock to go get some lobsters from the boat. But um, yeah, I, I don't feel the need to pull myself together, put on makeup to do any of those things. However, when I'm planning a trip to New York City, I actually plan my outfits that I'm going to be wearing and I do my hair and makeup every time I go out there. So I'm just um, dressing for the occasion, I guess is the best way to put it. And, but it's not because I have low self-esteem. Um, if you watch my Instagram, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see I am talking to the world uh, all the time in my stories with no makeup and I look, you know, terrible. I just roll out of bed. And again, I look terrible because I know when I look in the mirror and I am just looking at myself, I can determine when I look better and when I look worse. And so a lot of times on that Instagram, um, yeah, I'm not looking my best. 
but it doesn't mean that I have a low self-esteem um, because I want to put makeup on or somebody else has low self-esteem because they might want to get some fillers or have Botox or color their hair. The way we feel about ourselves and, and what we do is determined by our life's experiences and everyone has had different life experiences, some of them not so pleasant. And the fact that we want to look as beautiful as we can, or even look as young as we can, is less of a byproduct, in my opinion, from what we're told is beautiful to just changes that we know or notice about ourselves. And if there's a means to put it back to where it was before that we liked better, such as coloring our hair or putting on makeup or, you know, doing something, using a lash serum to try and get your lashes thicker again, drawing in your eyebrows, which are fading. Um, again, I just don't feel like it's the fact that we're not embracing aging or we don't want to age gracefully um, because I think it is very graceful um, if we can do some of these things and do whatever makes us feel better about ourselves. And Again, I find it empowering, not a byproduct of low self-esteem or sexism or ageism. So let me know what you think about all of this down in the comments below. Um, if you want to know the other products that I am wearing, this is Lisa Eldridge Lipstick in Painterly um, with the City Lips Clear Gloss over it. And I did use the Mirage eyeshadow palette. It's very subtle. I just really used this kind of orangish color here. This is their new palette by Alter Ego. Um, I do have like a 10% off code. I'm not sure if this one's 17 or $20, but these uh, Alter Ego palettes are really, really reasonable. Another good um, Christmas present. And what's what I like about this, like initially I looked at it and wasn't interested because I had these really glittery ones in the center, but these matte shades are beautiful. And of course, browns are back in, neutrals are back in. Um, but it also has um, these two black and a brown that you can be used as eyeliner. It's very uh, creamy. Um, and then the shimmers are kind of that um, cream to powder or just a real creamy eyeshadow. So it's beautiful. This is their Mirage palette. Um, and then I finished with, of course, the Charlotte Tilbury um, powder in medium, their airbrush flawless powder. So that's what I'm wearing on my face. Sorry, you're not getting to see the whole get ready with me uh, portion of it. Again, let me know your feelings and thoughts and your life experiences down in the comments below. Um, as always, I really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you next time.